Hello my crafty friends. Today I am sharing a new to me fun fold card. I wanted to show you that it fits in an envelope for mailing. This is an A7 envelope which is a standard North American size and it's meant to hold a 5 by 7 inch card. So the fun fold is called a twisted gatefold. How cool is that? So when I decided I wanted to make one, I got kind of poking around on YouTube and I knew it wasn't a new fun fold idea, but I found videos going back as far as 2016. Now I wasn't doing research, I was just kind of poking around to see, but uh, Don Griffiths from Don's Stamping Studio had a video posted, I believe it was March, but at, at any rate, in 2016, she posted one. Now they go by several different names, the majority of tutorials refer to these as a twisted gatefold, which to me makes sense. I love the little twist action you get. But they're also referred to as a diagonal gatefold. So if you are looking on YouTube and you want to see a whole bunch of them, those are the two kind of names you can search for, both the twisted gatefold and a diagonal gatefold. In addition to the different names, there was a bunch of different sizes. So a lot of the early ones were meant to fit in an A2 size envelope. So that's what I have here, just a standard, again, that's a North American size A2, which holds a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. And this is the measurements for those twisted gate folds. But you can see that, I mean, it's cute, but an A2 card, this is about the smallest card size I wanna make. So this just felt really small to me compared to this one that fits in the five by seven envelope. I'm much happier with this one. Now, Sam Colcott has a video as well. And with her measurements, her card also does fit in an A2 envelope. You have to kind of put them in wonky, but I, it was a little bit longer than, than what I needed. I was really happy with these measurements here. So I'll just go over some details and then I'll talk about how you can make these cards. Um, the pattern paper, oh, isn't this pattern paper beautiful? I love this paper. This is called Eucalyptus. It is from the Paper Studio and available at Hobby Lobby. We don't have a Hobby Lobby in Canada, but a lovely soul named Marilyn sent me some paper back in November. Um, just a random act of kindness that meant so much to me and I love it and I, it was so kind of her, and I, I'm not hoarding the paper. As you can see, I'm using this paper. It's my favorite colors, I love leaves, and I'm not letting it sit on a shelf, I'm going to use it. That being said, you can see when you put your card in the envelope, there's some kind of spaces the corners could get bent when it goes through the mail. So I did put a five by seven inch piece of white, lightweight, very lightweight cardstock in the envelope and I adhered it with just a bead of glue at the top because that's all you need to secure it in. It would have been beautiful lined with this paper. I just think it would have been stunning. I couldn't do it. Couldn't use a piece this big on something that someone's going to open look at and say, oh, isn't that nice? And then put it in recycling. So lightweight cardstock helps give the envelope just a little bit of body when it goes through the mail. And I, I'm not sure, I think I said that this was from the Forever Fern Stamps at Stampin' Up. The Celebrate, that is from Crafty Meraki. Both the Celebrate Slimline Tag and the Love Slimline Tag, they're both designed by Candace Fisher and they're available now at Crafty Meraki. I love them, I love the words, I love the chunky words, I love the size of them. They cut as a single piece, so that makes it really easy. And I just got so many ideas for, for these, both the tags and the words. I think these are amazing sets. So I cut the Celebrate twice, once from white cardstock, once from this dark teal, which is the same teal that I used on the card base. Offset it just a little bit and then spritzed it with my shimmer spray so it's got some shimmer. And then I added some coordinating sequins because a Celebrate card should be sparkly. Inside the stamping is 
coordinates with the envelope. It is from the Forever Fern Stamps at Stampin' Up! And the happy birthday to you. It just fit perfectly in there. It is from Birthday Greetings by Studio Katya. So these cards will stand for display. And the size that I decided to go with was taken from a video by Judy Newsom in June 2018. I am going to link her video in the description box below. So her sizes, she made a card base at eight and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. You score it at two and three quarters and five and a half. Now you're gonna need two diagonal lines. Both sides need to be the same. So you don't want one diagonal going this way and one diagonal going this way. They can both go this way. They don't have to go from left to right. They can go from right to left as long as they're both the same. Other measurements, the center panel, which is this white panel that I stamped on, is two and a half by five and a quarter inches. And then the pattern paper is also two and a half by five and a quarter inches, and you're gonna cut it in half on the diagonal, but don't just cut them in half. Take each rectangle to your card and lay it down, and that will tell you which angle you need to cut at. So for this panel, the way I folded mine, this one was cut on a diagonal from the top left to the bottom right. But when you're doing the paper for this one, that rectangle is cut opposite. They look complicated, but they're so easy to make. So your two vertical folds fold towards the center. Now I didn't bring a bone folder and you would want to make sure that your, your creases are nice and straight, everything is lined up. Like I can see this one is not as lined up as I would like it to be. So at like any gate fold, they're folding towards the center. And then you just do your diagonal folding. And those get folded towards the outside. And that's it. How cool is that? You can see I've got a little bit of a gap here. This isn't right on the edge. My scoring is, is fine, but when I was just doing the, the finger pressing, I wasn't as careful as I would be when I was making the card. This is just a sample to show you. So take your time, make your score lines crisp and everything will line up really nicely for you when you make your twisted gatefold card. The other thing to be mindful of is your sentiment or your embellishment on the front. It is going to twist. So if you have something that is definitely directional, if you've got a critter or something, and you have it sitting straight up and down when the card is closed, when they open it, it's gonna be skewed and sideways. So something just to play with when you're, when you're making them. I have seen a couple that did an embellishment with an elastic, uh, a hair elastic actually, a, a, nice, a nice quality black elastic, and they adhered that in between two elements. I think they were two circles and then they put a stamped image on the top circle. And then it slides over and so your embellishment is here and the elastic goes around the back and then comes up here. So that kind of holds it closed. Might be fun to play with a magnetic closure on them as well. But the majority of them I've seen, and I like this just the way it is, when it comes out of the envelope, People are just going to open it and ooh and awe at the cool folds. I think it's a fun, a fun take on a gatefold card. It's a fun fold that's easy to do. Because the papers at two and a half by five and a quarter are not that big, it's even a, a, a project that you can use up some smaller scraps on. I did the same pattern papers on mine. I love that paper, but most of the ones I've seen only have pattern paper either here and here and nowhere else, or they have one, two, or three different pattern papers. So, you know, one, one pattern on the outside here, one pattern on the inside, and then a third pattern on the outside underneath these twisted flaps. So there's lots of variations you can do. I hope you give this one a try and that you enjoyed my video today. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. And that's it for me today.